Let me be extremely clear with you. Getting a software engineering internship in 2026 is going to be brutal. Application volumes have exploded. Companies are seeing 20,000 plus applications for just a handful of roles. One Spotify engineering manager got 2,000 applications in 15 hours. And here's the thing. AI is also writing over 25% of code at companies like Google, while companies like Salesforce have announced hiring freezes because productivity with AI jumped 30%. But here's what nobody's telling you. People who are objectively less qualified than you are landing those internships today. I'm talking about students with worse GPAs, fewer projects, and less technical skills. Why? Because they understand the game. They've cracked the code on value capture, not just value creation. My name is Amon. By age 22, I landed six high paying software engineering internships at companies like Amazon, Shopify, and HP, plus multiple six figure full time job offers even after the software engineering market crashed. I didn't do this because I was the smartest person in the room. I did it because I treated the internship hunt like the competitive sport it actually is. Today, I'm giving you the complete no BS roadmap. Everything I learned from securing six internships, everything I've learned from coaching hundreds of students to land offers at FANG companies, and the fresh data on what's actually working right now. This is the definitive guide. Let's get into it. Now, before we dive into tactics, you need to understand what you're up against. The 2026 internship market is fundamentally different from everything we've seen before. First, the timeline has shifted. Big tech companies are now opening applications in August through November for roles the next summer. Companies are using rolling admissions and can fill their cohorts by January, even if the deadline says March. So if you're planning to apply in the spring for that summer, you've already lost. Second, referred candidates are hired at a rate of about 30% compared to 7% for candidates from other sources. Referred candidates are also four times more likely to land a job than those chosen through company recruitment websites. The math is simple. Apply cold and you're basically invisible. And third, the interview process itself is evolving. Companies are incorporating more project-based take-home assessments to verify that the code you wrote is actually yours. 77% of developers say that the assessments they face don't reflect the skills needed for the job, while 71% grind lead code to prep. The disconnect is real. And finally, the competition has never been fiercer. At some companies, intern to full-time conversion rates exceed 70%, which means firms are treating internships like extended job interviews. They must be insanely selective. They're not handing out internships left and right. But here's the good news. This is all systematic. It's a game with rules, and once you understand the rules, you can win. Now, here's the first concept that's going to change how you think about everything regarding getting an internship. It's called a value paradox. You've been taught that if you just get good enough, learn more frameworks, build more projects, grind more lead code, the internships will come. That's wrong. There are two separate things happening. One is called value creation, and the other is called value capture. Value creation is your technical ability. It's how good you actually are at coding. Value capture is the hiring process, so resumes, referrals, and interviews. It's how you get paid for being good. And most computer science students spend 95% of their energy on value creation and just 5% on value capture. Then they wonder why they're not getting interviews and getting offers. The painful truth is that value creation is only half the equation. I've seen students with mediocre technical skills land Amazon internships, freshmen landing Amazon internships because they mastered value capture. And on the flip side, I've seen brilliant coders with 4.0 GPAs get ghosted because they submitted a garbage resume. This video is about value capture. This is a strategy. This is the game. Now, before we get into specific tactics, you need to understand that landing an internship is actually a two part battle. Part one is getting interviews, and this is where 75% of people fail. You're submitting hundreds of applications and hearing nothing back. The problem? Your resume is garbage and you're not using referrals. Part two is passing interviews, and this is where the other 20 to 25% fail. You're getting interviews, but bombing them. The problem? You haven't prepared properly for technical and behavioral rounds. Most people don't even know what battle they're losing. They just keep doing the same thing over and over, hoping something will change. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you exactly how to win both battles. First, we'll tackle getting interviews, the resume optimization and the referral strategies that get you in the door, and then we'll cover passing interviews, the lead code prep and behavioral frameworks that actually get you the offer. Let's start with part one, getting interviews. I call this the 75% bottleneck, resume and referrals. Let me start with a diagnostic question. Have you submitted over 100 applications and got fewer than three live interviews? And I mean live interviews, not online assessments. 
If yes, you have a resume and a referral problem. This is the 75% bottleneck. Most people can't even get through this first door. Your resume is most likely terrible. I'm sorry, but it's true. And you need to spend hours fixing it. Here are the big mistakes that are killing your resume. Number one is leading with education instead of experience. Recruiters use something called the halo effect. If they see incredible work experience first, internships, research positions, hackathon wins, they subconsciously assume you're more qualified. Now, I'm not saying put your education at the bottom. You're still a student who's trying to get an internship, so keep your education at the top, but make sure that your first work experience is the most relevant, incredible one. So the key here is to get any kind of technical experience as soon as possible. Unpaid research, open source contributions, university clubs, hackathons. These have low barriers to entry, but they signal that you're doing something more than just going to class. Mistake number two is weak passive bullet points. Never, and I mean never, write bullet points like assisted with developing features or help the team improve performance. These are what I call bystander bullets. You sound like you were just standing in a corner watching rather than actually doing anything. You'll want to use strong action verbs. Executed, led, architected, optimized, implemented. Mistake number three is zero quantification. If your resume says built a web app, that's meaningless. If it says built a web app with React and Node.js that handles 500 plus concurrent users with 99.9% .9 uptime, now you're talking. Metrics are resume gold, like speed improvements, user counts, latency reductions, anything you can measure is valuable. Mistake number four is ignoring the ATS. Before a human sees your application, a bot scans it. This is called an applicant tracking system or ATS. If your resume doesn't have the right keywords, Java, Python, REST APIs, AWS, Docker, it gets auto-rejected. The fix is you want to load your resume with technical jargon pulled directly from the job description. Yes, customize your resume for every application. It's tedious. Do it anyway. Next up, let's talk about the referral golden ticket. This is the single most important thing you can do to get more interviews. Get referrals. I'll say it again. People with referrals are four times more likely to get hired than candidates who apply cold. Referred candidates are hired at a 30% rate compared to 7% for cold applicants. If you're not getting referrals, you're choosing to fail. And here's the exact three-part system I use to get hundreds of FANG level referrals. Step one is your warm network. Start by actually asking everyone you know. Family, friends, your roommate's cousin who works at Microsoft, parents of friends. People like helping. It makes them feel important, and most of them work at companies with open internships. A simple message you can send is, hey, I'm looking for a software engineer internship this summer. Does your company have any openings? I would love to speak to you about it if possible. And then on that conversation, ask them for a referral. That's it. Don't overthink it. Step two is LinkedIn volume. LinkedIn is the greatest networking tool ever created, but you're probably using it wrong. Here's a strategy. Find employees at your target companies. Use the people search filter, look for software engineers, especially those who went to your school or from your city and any connection point. Send 50 to 100 connection requests per week. Our students are sending 200 plus connection requests that are all custom per week. A great message is introducing yourself, saying you're studying computer science at their school and you're very interested in internships at their company. And then you can ask them to have a conversation and get a referral through that. Sure, out of the hundreds you send, most won't respond. A bunch will say no, but maybe 10 to 20 will say yes. And that's 10 to 20 potential referrals. Step three is Blind. Blind is an anonymous platform where tech employees hang out. It's gold for referrals because people on Blind don't care about being polite. They'll tell you exactly how to get in. Now, this is less applicable for smaller companies, but at any big tech company, you have tons of accounts on Blind that you can just DM and ask for a referral. Now, a pro tip regarding referrals is that timing really matters. You want to start applying to summer internships by July of the previous year. At the latest, apply to top companies by the fall or early spring at the latest. Many companies will have filled their intern quotas, so you need to start as soon as possible. Now, another big strategy most people miss, they apply to the wrong companies. I like to call this a stairway to software heaven. You can't just jump straight to the top to Fang or Quant. You have to climb one step at a time, start at small to mid levels before you're ready to go for Fang or Quant. Once you get an offer at a startup or a mid level company, then you become competitive to companies like Meta, Amazon, and Google. Now I know what you're thinking, Aman, this all sounds great, but I need help actually executing this. That's exactly why I created the Software Engineering Accelerator. Look, Resume optimization or referral outreach? It sounds good in theory, but it's hard to actually pull off. And that's why I went into the market and convinced multiple FANG level recruiters at companies like Amazon and Bloomberg, and multiple engineers at companies like Google, 
Microsoft and Meta to actually look and help you rewrite your resume line by line by line and help you get referrals. We also teach you exactly what to say in your LinkedIn connection messages and review your referral conversations to actually make sure you're getting referrals from the right people reliably. And students who we've worked with tend to get 15, 20 interviews in the first couple months when they had almost zero before. So if you're interested in landing so many interviews you have no idea what to do with, check out the top link in the description. But now let's move on to part two passing interviews. Okay, you've got interviews, congrats, but now you have a different problem. If you've had five plus OAs or interviews and failed all of them, you have a preparation problem. This is a 20% bottleneck. Let me be blunt. At this point, leak code is the highest leverage skill you can develop as a computer science student. I know it's annoying. I know you think it's stupid. I know you'd rather build cool projects, but here's the reality. Leak code is a domain specific IQ test that tech companies use to standardize their process. Every major company Google, Meta, Amazon, Microsoft uses it. Virtue signaling about how leak code doesn't test real skills won't get you a job. Accepting reality will. So how do you actually master leak code? Here's what doesn't work. Grinding 500 random problems and hoping something sticks. But here's what does work. Focused, consistent practice using the 80-20 principle. Now there are tons of problem sets and lists floating around online with 100, 200, 300 random problems. But the big problem with those is that it's daunting. It's overwhelming. You don't have time to do 300 problems if you want an internship this year. Instead, you want to focus on the 20% of topics that cover 80% of interview questions. These are arrays and strings, hash tables, binary search, trees, so DFS and BFS, graphs, and no, dynamic programming is not on that initial list. So if you master those simple topics, you'll handle 80 to 90% of internship interviews. And that's why I created a problem set called a Pareto problem set. If you're completely new to lead code or you want a structured curriculum, this problem set gives you exactly 50 problems to focus on. Think of it as your initial roadmap to get started and master 80 to 90% of coding interviews and OAs. You can go to amamanazar.com slash lead code or the link in the description to get it completely for free. Now, if you need help understanding how to solve those problems with clear explanations or video walkthroughs, Neat Code becomes your best friend. Neat Code is a personal friend of mine and his explanations are the best in the world. So if you want really good explanations, I would recommend going through the Pareto problem set to start solving those 50 problems and then looking at the Neat Code video solutions to actually understand them once you've tried it. Now, another element to this is you should never touch Leak Code hards at least at the beginning, if you're going for a software engineering internship. They tank your confidence and almost never come up. You want to stick to easies to get started and ideally mediums. Get really, really good at lead code mediums. Now, here's my exact approach that I use when tackling lead code problems. You want to spend 30 to 45 minutes trying to solve it yourself. And if you can't find out the optimal solution after 45 minutes, you want to look it up. But this is critical. Don't just copy the solution. Understand why it works. Then close the tab and code it yourself from scratch. If you can't, you didn't actually learn it. Now, I have a special method called the P-Boy method that I teach all of my students and I use personally when targeting lead code problems and coding interviews. Before you write a single line of code, step one is called P, pen and paper. You want to restate the problem in your own words and try to solve it by hand, how a human would. Then B stands for brute force. You want to come up with the simplest possible solution, even if it's incredibly inefficient. Then O is optimize. Think through how to optimize it and get better time and space complexity. And only once you're done with those three steps, you want to implement, which I stands for. Now you write the code for the optimal solution. If you use that approach with every lead code problem in every coding interview, you'll improve your pass rate significantly. The next important principle is called the Python advantage. I don't care if you did Java, C++, God forbid JavaScript, you need to switch to Python because Python is 30 to 40% faster to write. It has built-in data structures that save you tons of lines of code, and it's so much easier to explain your logic to interviewers because everybody knows Python. Speed matters in interviews, and Python gives you speed. Now, lead code is like the gym. Doing 20 problems a week before your Amazon interview is like doing 100 push-ups a day before a marathon. It doesn't work. Do five to six problems per week, every week for months. You want to create external accountability, like creating a lead code club. You could find a study partner or even use a tool like Beeminder that charges you money if you miss your goal and don't do enough lead code problems. See, so many people I call lazy Larrys are ones who cram the day before an interview and then wonder why you fail. Don't be a lazy Larry. Now, I mentioned Neat Code earlier. It's one of the best coding interview resources out there. Once you're done with the pre order problem set, which is enough to kind of get you through those first few months of prep, then you should go and work through the Neat Code list. If you go to neatcode.io, he's got a practice portal with hundreds of problems. You can even submit them on his website now with video solutions and explanations listed there. His 150 is incredible. That's what I use to get started. He also has a 250 list, which is great if you want to get more advanced. The genius of Neat Code is that it solves LeetCode's biggest problem. LeetCode has thousands of problems, but almost no structure. 
and Necode curates that medium level problem set and explains them clearly. So like I mentioned, start with the pre-order problem set. And once you're done with that, you should be good enough to solve almost all intern-level coding interviews and online assessments. Now, trust me, I've met people who have solved 500, 1,000 Leco problems, but they still can't get an internship. Why? Because every single company has a behavioral interview. Not every company actually has coding rounds, but everyone has a behavioral. And yet people spend 90% of their prep time on lead code and less than 10% on behavioral. That's completely backwards. You must master behavioral interviews if you want an internship in 2026. Now, the most famous method when it comes to behavioral is called the STAR approach. That means you take a behavioral question and you answer it in this format. S stands for situation. You want to set the context. T stands for task, which means clearly explain the goal. A is for action, so what you actually did, or is the result, so what actually happened, and you want to make sure you quantify it. Let me give you a rough example of what a strong star answer looks like. At my last internship, which is situation, I was tasked with reducing API response time by X amount. I refactored the database queries to use indexing and implemented caching with Redis. As a result, response time dropped from 800 to 120 milliseconds, an 85% improvement. See how clean that is? Now, of course, you're going to add more detail in a real interview, but you want to make sure you're giving context, explaining your specific contribution and showing measurable impact. Now, here's the key. You don't need 50 different stories. You need a few great ones that you can adapt. Now, I call this 120% rule. Instead of writing answers for 100 different questions, pick five solid stories and know them to 120%. And at that point, you can adapt all of the stories to any question that gets thrown at you. So stories like a technical challenge you overcame, a time you failed and what you learned, a time you led a team or took initiative. Then you'll want to mold those stories to fit whatever questions you get. Now, here's a little secret about applying to specific companies like Amazon. Amazon has something called the Amazon Leadership Principles. So if you just memorize those leadership principles, you are significantly more likely to pass their behavioral interview because Amazon interviewers are trained to evaluate their candidates on those leadership principles. So principles like build for the long term or bias for action. If you just sneak those words in your responses, you're significantly more likely to pass those interviews. And the same is for Meta, Google, Microsoft, any tech company, use their values in your behavioral responses. Now, amazing modern hack is you can actually use AI tools like ChatGPT to generate custom behavioral questions based on your resume, then dictate your response and have it give you feedback. That's a low budget way to just get initial practice and actually build your behavioral interview skills. All right, now that you understand the core strategy for getting and passing interviews, let me give you some cutting edge insights based on what's working right now in 2026. These are the trends that are reshaping the game. And if you're not aware of them, you're already behind. Insight number one is that project-based assessments are replacing live coding. Companies are assigning more project-based take-home assessments. These test not only your technical skills, but how you follow instructions, structure code, and communicate your thinking. The advantage is that you have time to polish your work, but the disadvantage is that they're looking at everything, code quality, comments, readme files, and commit history. Treat every take-home like it's production code, clean naming, modular functions, tests, and a professional readme. Insight number two is that AI is part of the evaluation. Now that AI tools are everywhere, here's what you need to know. Hiring managers are now asking you questions like, what's your favorite AI prompt? Or what have you built with AI lately? The translation is that you need to be comfortable using tools like GitHub Copilot, ChatGPT, and Cursor. Critical point is that you also need to be able to explain how and why you use these AI tools. Don't use AI as a crutch. Use it as a tool to accelerate your learning. Insight number three is that interviews are getting harder. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Google is now routinely asking lead code hard problems in interviews when they used to be rare. Standards are rising across the board. What does this mean for you? The bar is higher, but it is still beatable. You just need to be more disciplined than your competition. Now that you know the competitive landscape is getting tougher, here's a reality check. The path takes time. You're probably not landing your role at OpenAI or Anthropic straight out of undergrad unless you have top conference publications and exceptional credentials. Look, there's no single hack that's going to get you an internship. From what I've seen, it's taking all parts of the process and improving them as far as you can. So having an amazing resume, getting referrals, making your LinkedIn outstanding, mastering behavioral and technical interviews, and becoming a top 1% lead coder. And once you have all of those things, it's inevitable that you get an internship this year. So like I mentioned earlier, if you want help for us to do every single part of the process with FANG level recruiters and engineers, people doing the hiring, helping you get hired, check out the top link in the description. And if you want help with lead code, watch this video over here. And if you want help getting referrals, watch this video over here. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.